This is Professor Ryan Paul, and this is part two of the Building an Argument lecture. So let's look at constructing our argument. Let's say we're going to side with the claim marijuana should be made legal. That's our overall goal. So um, our reasons, our basic answer to the research question is marijuana has many positive benefits, few proven negative effects, and there are many downsides to keeping it um, illegal. And so that is causing us to make the conclusion or make the claim that marijuana should be made legal. And what's the evidence that we use to support these reasons? That comes through the specific studies, etc., that you found in your research that then can support these claims. So let's look at the evidence that we might use, the sources that we might use for this ar argument, and how we would use them. And these are all completely made up. I've just made them up for the purposes of this exercise. But let's say this, these are uh, sources that we found, and we've determined that they are reliable, credible, etc., etc. So we have one, a father's struggle, drug laws in Baltimore, tells the story of a father whose son was arrested and imprisoned for jail, and then was killed um, by another inmate, and the father is advocating to reduce penalties related to marijuana use. The article also talks about statistics uh, related to the laws and their punishments, and particularly for certain um, types of offenders. Young people, first offenders, and African Americans receive harsher sentences. So this is, let's say, the evidence that we've got from this source. Now, how could we use this evidence? Well, what are the sorts of reasons that this could support? What ideas might his data help us to articulate? Well, he's showing us evidence that the pro that prosecuting marijuana harshly has profound negative effects on individuals and families. That's what the whole story is an example of. It also supports the, the idea that marijuana laws are disproportionately um, uh, negative towards a certain segment of society, African Americans, and so demonstrates a racial bias in the legal system. Now again, neither of these reasons on their own proves your overall claim, but when taken together with a number of other reasons, they can argue that marijuana should be legal. So how do you use this evidence? Well, the, per the personal story aspect of it, the anecdote, could be an effective way to get the sympathy of readers, show the human side of this argument, as we've talked about before, and it'd be a good way to begin your argument or introduce the topic to get your reader's attention. Uh, there's also statistical support in this so uh, source that shows how the individual story connects to larger trends. And that can be used in another section of the essay or can be used to show how, even though it's an individual story of one person, that it uh, exemplifies certain larger trends, larger issues that affect more people. Here's another fictional source. A study of violent crime rates in urban neighborhoods in Colorado from 2000 to 2015. So this person looks at the statistics related to violent crime over a 15-year period, which includes sometimes both before and after marijuana was legalized in that state. And the argument that this person comes to after looking at all the data and processing it uh, she argues that there's no measurable increase in violent crime over this period and that certain types uh, have actually shown a slight downward trend over this 15-year period. So what could you use this information to support? What kind of data or what kind of reasons would this data support? Uh, it supports the idea that the legalization of marijuana does not cause any increase in violent crime. You could say, look at this state where it has been legalized we see that there's been no increase in violent crime since it was legalized. Thus, that's not a, a reason to keep it illegal. And in fact, it shows that the use of marijuana is probably not a factor or direct cause of violent crime, not related to violent crime in any way. So those are some reasons that you could articulate using this article and its evidence as support. So how would you use it? One thing you could use it for is as a counter argument to claims that legalizing marijuana could be dangerous. So, for example, if one of your one of the sources on the other side says, if we legalize marijuana, we risk 
um, opening the door to such and such crime rates, blah, blah, blah. You could say, well, one com common argument says that marijuana can lead to more crime. However, we do have evidence that in Colorado, legalization did not lead to violent crime. Uh, now, another important thing about this is that even though it does show a downward trend, we can't necessarily attribute that as a positive effect of marijuana without further research, particularly since that's something that was occurring before the legalization and continued afterwards. So we don't want to use the evidence to make claims that we can't support. A fictional source that argues about the palliative effects of marijuana use in cancer patients. So arguing that 80% of patients uh, who are undergoing cancer treatment report improvement in their mood, pain levels, appetite, and so forth. And uh, also comparing the effectiveness of marijuana to other treatments, studies show, according to this author or this author's studies, show that 64% of patients find that marijuana is more effective than other treatments. So 80% improve and 64% say that they've improved more than with other types of medicine. So what kind of reasons could we use this to support? Well, this could obviously support the claim or the reason that marijuana has documented medical be benefits in patients suffering from cancer. And we could even claim uh, that marijuana is shown to be generally more effective for cancer patients than other treatments. And this could also support the reason that further research would even uh, uncover more benefits. So these are all reasons that we could argue based on the idea that marijuana helps cancer patients. Uh, how would we use it? These are just strong positive points. This could be a point in and of itself. Marijuana's medical uses uh, uh, for cancer treatment, that could be a whole paragraph or series of paragraphs. Um, and you can connect this with other evidence of medical and health benefits, as well as possibly economic benefits, um, depending on issues of cost, if there's discussion of the costs of marijuana versus other treatments and so forth. So this is just straight up good evidence, a good argument, uh, a good reason that you can have as one of your main pillars of your claim, of your argument in a paper like this. Fictional source number four on marijuana tax revenues and school funding in Colorado. This person shows uh, that the legalization of marijuana led to an influx of $20 million in tax revenues which was then used to increase the public school budget. And this person also calculates that if Texas were to legalize marijuana and tax it in a similar fashion, based on population and so forth, it could raise between 35 and $45 million per year in taxes, which could then be given to Texas public schools. So what reasons would this support? You could say the legalization of marijuana has had measurable economic benefits. For example, let's look at what's happened in Colorado. So that's a, a good, strong piece of evidence, a strong point, the economic benefits of marijuana to base your legalization argument on. And you could extend that by saying legalization of marijuana in Texas would likely have similar, if not even greater benefits. Um, if additional research is available and possible, you could possibly extend this analysis to calculate revenues on a national scale. So if in Colorado it raised $20 million, what would it do on the national scale? Maybe it'd be $100 million or $200 million, whatever it might be. And this can bolster other economic arguments. Obviously, if there is other data that you have about economic growth that's related to it, for example, investment opportunities or employment uh, ben uh, employment opportunities from legalizing marijuana. This could be tied into that. And um, if people are making claims about possible negative effects that it could cause increased crime or have a, a negative economic benefit by, for example, I don't know, making people lazy and not work as much, this could counter that claim and show actually it seems to have economic benefits, not economic uh, n negative effects. And finally, our last piece of fictional research, an article about marijuana and motivation, stereotypes, and reality. And so in this art article, Ingrid Bergman compares the attitudes towards marijuana use and its effects, the sort of popular attitudes about that, to what scientific studies show. 
Um, she argues that while uh, stereotypical beliefs about stoners are greatly exaggerated, psychological studies show that chronic marijuana users tend to be less goal-oriented, perform more slowly on certain tasks, and are more likely to procrastinate. So this is actually something that might be more on the other side of the argument. So how are we going to use this? So since this documents a negative effect on marijuana, it seems to contradict your thesis that marijuana should be made legal. But it's useful as a concession to show that you understand the counter arguments that the issue is complex, it's not just a perfect one either or, and that you admit that your proposal has some drawbacks or questions that need to be considered. So what how could you use this? What could you say? What reasons could you use could you support through this evidence? You could say, although marijuana use may have some negative effects on motivation, the stereotypes are greatly exaggerated. And so you could say that these uh, uh, ultimately these slight negative effects um, do not outweigh the much more significant positive ones, uh, and they're not dangerous enough to support banning marijuana because there's all sorts of things that make people less goal-oriented goal or make them procrastinate. Um, even if it's a minor negative effect from marijuana use, that doesn't mean that the whole idea of legalizing it should be thrown out because of this evidence. So it's always important to acknowledge potential counter-arguments and try to use them, try to answer them and respond to them in such a way so that they don't take away from your argument but overall strengthen it even while showing some complexities or possible drawbacks. So just as we did with analyzing a debate for essay one, we want to start organizing our sources and evidence, seeing which sources are talking about similar topics, which could be used to reinforce each other. And I'm going to assume that we have other sources for this topic that I'm not discussing here. More sources that support legalizing or can be used to support the legalization of marijuana. Other sources that could be used to argue against the legalization. Uh, but just using the ones that we've talked about, what, have, what are some connections? Well, uh, Bell and Cantor both discuss issues of crime and punishment. So that could be, uh, those are related, those could be talked about together. Uh, both Bell and Bergman talk about stereotypes associated with marijuana use. Rodriguez and Pinkshirt both discuss potential benefits of marijuana use, so that could those could be discussed in one section. Um, Cantor's evidence about uh, the uh, lack of an increase in crime could reinforce Pinkshirt's conclusions about benefits, economic benefits. And the two articles that talk about stereotypes, um, even though one is more negative towards marijuana than the other, they could be used to support each other. They could be used to reinforce the idea that stereotypes about marijuana use and marijuana users are flawed. So these are some ways that the research that we found might connect to each other. That brings us to the end of part two. And in part three, we'll finish up by, again, looking at how to construct the argument as a whole, how to put the reasons and evidence together in a logical order, and how to address counter-arguments.